I tried beating Terraria, but I can catch everything with my bug net. Nothing is off limits. We can catch bosses, enemies, projectiles, and even summons. Will I be able to catch and defeat the Moon Lord? Well, let's find out. I started off by spawning into the world and chopping down trees. My first goal was to build an NPC house as fast as possible in order to get the merchant. As soon as we get the merchant, we can get ourselves a bug net, which lets the real challenge actually begin. I went to the caves to mine, get myself a furnace, get myself some ores, and then I proceeded to build some NPC houses. I went back into the caves, got myself more money because we need 50 silver coins to get the merchant to move in, and once the merchant moved in, I went over to him and bought myself a bug net. The first thing I did was, of course, pick up the merchant himself just to show him who's boss. Then I went over to the desert and started toying with mobs. I picked up an antline with my bug net to test out how everything worked, and I kid you not, I could literally just pick it up with my bug net and then drop it which would just cause it to spawn on my cursor. This was super overpowered and I can't wait to see what this is like with bosses. Oh, by the way, somehow I also managed to get two merchants, so that was pretty cool. But after this, I proceeded to go into the jungle and while catching the spiky projectiles of the jungle slime, I managed to kill myself and upon spawning him in back at my home, I died again and again. This is where I got the brilliant idea to make myself a death trap. Essentially, this was my prototype. I would build a tiny box of dirt and then place all of the mobs that I have caught with my bug net inside this cube of dirt and just proceed to annihilate all of them. This didn't really work too well right now because of the lack of materials, but trust me, I ended up improving this in the future and it became super overpowered. After this, I started mining myself out a elevator and within the elevator, I also proceeded to farm out life crystals. Since my weapons were absolutely horrific, the only thing I could do is just catch mobs and honestly this was more overpowered than any other weapon you could think of because taken. Let's say a mob is annoying me all I have to do is catch it with my bug net and then use the most overpowered weapon against it which was a trash bin. Ah yes the ultimate one shot weapon. I built myself a bunch of NPC prisons once I came back to spawn. I mean houses. And then I went into the corruption in order to break one of the orbs so we can get a musket and some meteorite to spawn in. After this I went back to the jungle and searched for more life crystals and so we we can craft ourselves the blade of grass and then after our jungle expedition i came back to spawn and built myself an arena for the eye of cthulhu i was super excited for this because we can finally test out and see what happens when we actually catch a boss with the net i waited for it to turn to nighttime and summon in the eye of cthulhu almost immediately i caught it with my net and i had it in my inventory upon letting it free from my inventory it regained all of its hp and just became a normal boss so when catching mobs with the net they end up healing all the way back to max hp that is the only downside to it and with that being the only downside it's still pretty op anyways we killed the eye of cthulhu crafted ourselves the light's bane and then went to go fight the eater of worlds this was very interesting because for some reason this worm boss was so much differently made than any other boss in the game we could catch different segments of the boss which would correspond to different parts of the eater of worlds so for example we could catch the midsection which would get rid of its hp or we could catch its head which would let us summon in the eater of worlds over and over again and this is important because it came in later when we needed to farm out money. Anyways, I caught the Eater of Worlds and defeated it. And then after this, I made myself a Nightmare Pickaxe and went to farm out Hellstone as well as Obsidian. But during this time, the goblins decided to invade us. So of course, I fought them, caught half of them, killed half of them. But the bottom line is we ended up taking them out and we got rid of them. Once it was nighttime and I had molten armor and all the Hellstone gear, I went over to Skeltron's dungeon. I summoned him in. I picked up his left hand, picked up his right hand, and then picked up his head. I resummoned him and then proceeded to take him out. Once Skeletron was defeated, I went into his dungeon in search for the Muramasa because that is the last sword we needed to craft the Knight's Edge. I found it relatively quickly along with the Goblin Tinker and then after this I proceeded to come all the way back to spawn. We also managed to get the mechanic meaning we can now upgrade our death trap and essentially what I did for this is put a one second timer connected to a bunch of dart traps and then we could summon in every mob we wanted to brutally execute inside of this box. Yes, Yes, this is cruel, I know, but this is the boy a way of killing mobs in Terraria. Check this out though, like I mean, I kind of feel like this is morally wrong in some way, like I don't think I should be doing this, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to get rid of mobs, am I right boyos? After this, I went down to the underworld, killed the guide voodoo demon, chucked the guide voodoo doll into the lava, and summoned in the wall of flesh. This was very interesting, because we could actually pick up two of the eyes of the wall of flesh and not desummon it, and this made the boss fight so much easier just 
just like check this out. And the thing is, we can fight the wall of flesh regardless because if we get in a sticky situation, we can just pick it up and then try it all over again later by resummoning it. This was like a very unseen advantage of the bug net, but yes, this helped us out a lot because I could not beat the wall of flesh yet due to my low HP. I went into the jungle in order to max out all of my HP, and once I had 400 health, I went to go fight the wall of flesh again. I used the knight's edge to deal damage to its eyeballs, and then used the molten fury to absolutely demolish it. Once we made it to hard mode, I made my way over to the corruption and started breaking the demon altars in order to bless our world with the hard mode ores. Usually the wraiths become really annoying during this point of the game, but I could just pick them up with my bug net, which made them practically nothing to me. Once we broke enough demon altars, I went to mine out cobalt, made myself a cobalt pickaxe, then made myself an oracalcum pickaxe and anvil, and after this, I went to go mine out titanium. This was a long and grueling process of getting enough titanium to craft myself a forge, a repeater, all of the armor. This part usually takes the longest in Terraria, and honestly, I wish there was a faster way to get through this, but yeah, there wasn't, and I just had to grind. But yeah, once I had full titanium armor and a titanium repeater, we can now start challenging the hard mode bosses. Before this, I made myself the Louis AFK battler buffs and proceeded to go challenge a bunch of wyverns to get more souls of light and craft ourselves a set of wings. Because I am not making the same mistake that I always do. I got myself a bunch of buff potions once I came back to spawn and then proceeded to summon in the twins. Using my bug net, I picked up Retinazer and then I picked up Spasmatism. So essentially, I summoned in the twins and then there were no more twins left. In reality though, my strategy was this. I pick up one of the twins and fight the other one until he becomes very low. Once that twin becomes low, I summon in the other one, kill the one that's on low HP, and then kill the remaining one. This made it super easy because we essentially only had to fight one boss the entire time instead of two, and it made the difficulty of the twins essentially into the Eye of Cthulhu. I then went to go grind out Souls of Night and Souls of Light in order to craft the rest of the boss summons, and once it turned to nighttime, I first decided to fight Skeletron Prime. This was also so easy because we could just use the bug net to catch all of his saws and all of his other arms, so then we could only have the skull left. I kid you not, boyos, this made the boss fight so brutally devastatingly easy. Like I'm saying, this goes from Skeletron Prime to literally just feeling like Skeletron, like there is no challenge to this once he loses his arms. Anyways, we took out Skeletron Prime, and now all we have left is the Destroyer. I summon him in, and I try to use the same tactic that I used against the Eater of Worlds, by just trying to catch his different segments, but once I did that, he kind of glitched out. Then I had this giant worm just stuck in one spot, I could pick up all the pieces and it was just absolutely weird, like it was mind-boggling, I didn't know what was going on, but I guess I resummoned him, picked up more of his pieces, and then he split into pieces, I don't know what was going on. Like Boyos, we're just gonna have to fight the Destroyer the OG way, we're not gonna be able to really cheese this boss. So I waited for it to turn to nighttime again, and I decided to summon him in. I used Jester's arrows to absolutely blast him, and once we took out the Destroyer, the jungle grows restless, meaning we can move on to Plantera. Oh by the way, I forgot to mention, if you don't subscribe to the Boyo Boyo channel in the next 5 seconds, a boogeyman is going to come to your house and pick you up with a bug net. So be careful, this is not a warning, this is a threat. During this time I went to go farm out turtles so we can get more turtle armor, and instead of actually killing them I decided to catch them with my bug net and then later just put them in the trap, but in the process I also caught a ton of derplings, which I had to get rid of, and what better way to get rid of them than to put them in my death trap. So of course it's what I did, and after I took them out I decided to put my turtles in the trap as well. They managed to escape and kill me and it didn't really work out too well, but hey, at least we tried and got some turtle shells. Next I went to go farm out chlorophyte, farm out more turtle shells, and try to find Plantera's bulb. Because as you might have guessed boyos, Plantera is our next boss. I crafted myself full turtle armor, crafted myself a Plantera bulb detector, grinded the Eater of Worlds to get myself more money, built myself an arena for Plantera, and then using the Yelts and the Master Yo-Yo bag, I actually summoned in Plantera and killed her with the Yo-Yo. I did try to previously catch her once, but upon summoning her back in, she ended up disappearing. So as for Plantera, we can't really cheese her either. Once Plantera was defeated, I made my way into Golem's Temple. I picked up all the traps in order to upgrade our death trap back at spawn, and after receiving a couple of lizard power cells, I went to his altar and summoned in Golem. This was absolutely devastating. Before he could do anything, we took off both of his arms. And then in his second phase, once his head went off his body, we picked up his head and he had absolutely no way to damage us. As long as we didn't physically get touched by Golem, which was, might I add, very easy to do, Golem could deal no damage to us whatsoever 
whatsoever. On our very first defeat of Golem, we ended up getting a pig saw, so I grabbed his altar and took it back to spawn. We fought Golem and spawn a bunch more times in order to get full beetle armor and then beetle wings later, but I essentially utilized the exact same strategy of just grabbing his arms then grabbing his head later, and we did this over and over again until, well I got bored. After this, I went to Skeletron's dungeon to fight the lunatic cultists, and I started messing around too much by picking up that mysterious tablet that is above all the lunatic worshippers, and then there was this one time where I picked it up, tried to summon it back in, and it didn't work, meaning we're gonna have to go all the way back and refight Golem. But yeah, once I beat Golem, I came back and started fighting the lunatic cultist. I probably should have got a better weapon than the Yelts. I mean, this made the lunatic cultist boss fight like 10 times harder than it really should have been. The Yelts just didn't do good damage against this boss, and it was really annoying, but we still took out the lunatic cultist regardless. I did try to pick him up, but then all of his HP would reset. One interesting thing that I did find is you could actually catch his projectiles. So if you were low on HP and wanted to recover, you could just stand there in one spot with the bug net and catch everything, but I didn't do that because I want to finish this as fast as possible. Anyways, we took him out and now we could fight the celestial pillars. This was very weird because we could actually pick up the pillars with our bug net. So the first pillar I went to was the solar pillar and because I didn't really want to travel too far out of my way to get it, I decided to just pick it up and then just summon it in at my base. And also since my weapons are underpowered, once it was at my base, I just decided to pick up the mobs instead and put them in my very new and improved death trap. Using this tactic, we ended up taking out the solar pillar and I crafted myself the solar eruption. I know I went through this part very quickly, but I assure you this took me a solid 30 minutes to do. Yeah, the Yelts was just not it for taking out the solar pillar. After this, I went to go take out the rest of the pillars and what I actually realized is that you don't really need to take out the pillars. You could just pick them up and it would count as you taking them out. And so for the very last few pillars, I didn't even destroy them. I just picked them all up with my bug net and kept them in my inventory. And once I came back to spawn, my screen started shaking, signifying that Moon Lord was about to spawn in. I bought myself a ton of buffs and got ready to fight the octopus monster. As soon as he spawned in, I really tried my best to use the bug net on everything. I was trying to pick up his eyes. I was trying to pick up his arms. I was trying to pick up his laser and almost nothing worked. I did end up picking up his core, but that was very, very useless because it would just resummon the Moon Lord once I placed it down. So that kind of means that the Moon Lord is going to be fought the OG way. I took out both of his hands and then once they were gone, I could actually pick up those eyeball servants, meaning that once we took out all three of his eyes, there was absolutely nothing that could deal damage to us. I kid you not, I literally stood there in one spot until we defeated the Moon Lord's core and inevitably took out the Moon Lord. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Go follow my Instagram in the description down below. I know I never really shouted that out before, but yeah, this has been Boyo. Peace out.